Hello everyone. This is Pinoy Historian. Let's talk about the nation that life is different than the other nation. This is Australia. But before we continue to our story, if you are new in my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more exciting videos. So, let's watch it. Life is different down under. Down under is an English expression that has become known to many in recent years. But under what? It refers to countries under, or below, the equator. In a technical sense, all countries of the Southern Hemisphere could be termed down under. However, only Australia and New Zealand are commonly referred to in that way. This article will concentrate on Australia, which name comes from the Latin word Australis, meaning Southern. Life in Australia is different from life in many lands in the Northern Hemisphere. And it is not only the geographic location that makes it so. There are many other differences that visitors notice. In 1788, European settlement of this large, sun-drenched country began. A group of sailing ships known as the First Fleet sailed into Sydney Cove. Their passengers were mostly convicts from England, Ireland, and Scotland, who brought with them the English language. For the next 150 years, most immigrants were of British origin. Following World War II, the immigration patterns changed. Today, there are thousands of new Australians from different countries, the largest numbers being from Italy and Greece. The immigrants have broadened the Australian way of life and have brought with them their own languages and distinctive pronunciation of English, as well as their cooking and cultures. This accounts for the variety of accents heard here. But even those whose families have lived here for many generations have a distinctive accent and way of speaking English. The Australian pronunciation of the English vowels A, E, I, O, U takes on a flat, often indistinct, sound, which may take time to distinguish accurately. Then there are expressions peculiar to Australia. For example, no matter what time of day or night it is, rather than good morning or good evening, the accepted salutation is a friendly day, mate. Often this is followed by polite talk about one's health, and the visitor may be asked, how you're going, mate, all right? To survive in this rugged land called for adaptability and strength of character. This may account for much of the optimism of many Australians, giving rise to the phrase, she'll be right, mate. This implies that one need not worry so much when things look bleak, as everything should turn out all right eventually. The forward to the publication The Australians Observes, it stands to reason that a country which began its life in chains, and 200 years later has become one of the most dynamic and prosperous of the small nations, must produce some fascinating and diverse characters. They make up. The Australians. The quality of mateship is regarded by many Australians as having come about by a strong survival instinct over the last two centuries. They like to note the tenacity of Australian soldiers in World War I. Along with New Zealand's armed forces, these rugged troops were known as ANZACs, an acronym for the Combined Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. They also became well known as diggers, but it is uncertain whether this referred to their digging trenches or to digging in the gold fields of Australia, where men flocked during the 1800s. Visitors from countries where traffic flows on the right-hand side of the road find driving in Australia very different. All over the country, vehicles are driven on the left-hand side of the road. So if you arrive in Australia from a country where right-hand driving is the norm, your first steps across a busy road may prove hazardous. Your ingrained look to the left, then to the right, and then to the left again road crossing routine could be disastrous. Now you must think, look to the right, then to the left, and then to the right again before crossing. Well done. You are learning fast. Oops. You almost got into the car on the wrong side. You forgot that the driver sits on the right-hand side in this country. Down under, in relation to the northern hemisphere, the seasons are reversed. Hot, dry winds come from the north and northwest, whereas all the cold changes come from the south. The cold bearing northerly is never referred to here, but be careful of the icy southerly buster, with its chilling breath and possible snow and blizzards. 
Australia is Earth's driest and hottest continent, with temperatures in the dry inland areas reaching 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 30 degrees Celsius. The highest recorded was 127.6 degrees, 53.1 degrees Celsius. The lowest was minus 8 degrees, 22 degrees Celsius, near Mount Kosciuszko, Australia's highest mountain peak in the Snowy Mountains region. By Northern Hemisphere standards, it does not get very cold here. For example, consider Melbourne, the capital city of the state of Victoria. Though this city is in the extreme south of Australia, the average daily temperature in the month of July ranges from 43 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, 6 to 13 degrees Celsius. Compare this with the average daily January temperature in Beijing, China, 14 to 34 degrees, minus 10 to plus 1 degrees Celsius, or to New York's 25 to 37 degrees, minus 4 to plus 3 degrees Celsius. Both cities are at a distance from the equator similar to that of Melbourne. Why is it warmer down under, especially when Australia is close to the coldest place on Earth, Antarctica? The difference is that land masses dominate the northern hemisphere, but oceans dominate the southern hemisphere. Australia and New Zealand are surrounded by thousands of square miles of ocean, which creates a buffer of warmer air against the frigid Antarctic air masses, thus keeping the climate warmer. Because of the large size of the Australian continent, the variation in climate in different parts is quite marked. In the more southerly states, the seasons are distinct, with winters of clear, cold, or frosty nights, usually followed by pleasant, warm days. These pleasant winter days often resemble the summer temperatures of many countries in the Northern Hemisphere. In the northern states of Australia, however, the year is simply divided into two seasons, the long dry season and the wet season with its monsoonal rains. In Darwin, the capital city of the Northern Territory, the temperature hovers at about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius. As a result of the predominantly warm weather on much of the continent, the Australian people are for the most part casual dressers. But wearing a wide-brimmed hat is important. There is a higher incidence of skin cancer here than in more temperate countries because of the greater exposure to sunlight. As there are still plenty of wide open spaces in Australia, many picnic areas are set up with facilities for outdoor barbecues. Meat is comparatively inexpensive, so sausages and steak are standard barbecue fare. But are those people standing around the outdoor barbecue giving one another secret hand signals? No, they are just waving their free hand to keep the flies away. Flies and mosquitoes pose quite a problem for outdoor eating, especially in warmer weather. So, living down under means learning to live with flies and mosquitoes, and most houses have screen doors at the front and the back. In earlier days, people wore hats with several corks hanging from the brim to act as a fly deterrent. Since the advent of insect repellents, such hats are not seen much anymore. Another difference has to do with the magnificent, colorful flowers and flowering shrubs and trees. The strong fragrance usually noticed in the northern hemisphere is absent. Here, the garden lover must put his nose close to flowers to get the full effect of their fragrance. Of course, this is not true of all Australian flowers. The Daphne and the jasmine shrubs, for example, provide a spectacular treat for your nostrils. But generally speaking, blooms have less fragrance here than in colder climes. Space is an aspect of living down under that truly is different. The concept of what is close by or what is far away is different from that in many northern countries. Distances between some townships are so great that one can travel for hours before seeing another town. This is especially so in what is affectionately known as the outback. Here the space and tranquility is overwhelming, and a visitor can fill his lungs with fresh, unpolluted air. Nearby is a eucalyptus tree, commonly referred to as a gum tree. Gum trees and wattle, or acacia trees, dominate the inland landscape. As evening approaches, a glorious sunset delights your eyes. But darkness comes with surprising suddenness, for there is very little twilight down under. Soon, a brilliantly clear southern night sky reveals its multitude of stars, including the famous formation called the Southern Cross. The gum trees are etched against the sky as the wildlife begins its rest, and a stillness engulfs you that seems to accentuate the wide open space. Carefully extinguish the campfire before snuggling into your sleeping bag. 
That is essential, for when fire gets out of control in the Australian bush, it soon becomes a holocaust that respects nothing in its path. The crowns of the gum trees explode in the intense heat, which causes the fire to spread at a frightening speed. In the hot, dry summer months, bushfire is a constant dread of those living near the bushland areas. Fire bans and regulations on lighting fires in the open must be strictly observed. Soon dawn breaks, and you wake up to noisy laughter as a flock of kookaburras that have spent the night in a nearby gum tree break into happy song. Bemused, you look out of your tent and see other trees teeming with beautifully colored birds. By now you may already have met up with many of them, as well as with other creatures, including kangaroos, koalas, emus, and maybe even a wombat. The ones you are not eager to meet are snakes and spiders. Yes, this continent has some of the most venomous snakes and spiders in the world. But most of these will never be a threat to you if you don't disturb them. It's time for breakfast around the campfire usually in the form of bacon and eggs and slices of well-toasted bread. The fresh air has given you a good appetite. Then, as you try to enjoy your breakfast among the flies, you begin to reflect on this bush experience, which has given you a glimpse of the vastness of the Australian continent. Now your travels in this spacious country have ended, and you are returning home. No doubt your experience in getting to know the friendly Australians and their unpretentious manner of living will linger in your memory. Like most visitors, you probably want to come again someday. But there is one conclusion you have undoubtedly reached. Life is different down under. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to share this video.